What is up, everybody? We are back to talk the Wyndham Championship. Before we do, let's quickly cover the Olympics. What an event that we had in Paris over the weekend. Looked like John Ron was going to run away with it. I think Scheffler was six back with seven to play. Something crazy like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, Rom kind of fell apart there. And Scheffler just went bonkers. Um, that kind of reminded me of like Prime Tiger. Just absolutely everything was clicking. And, you know, the first three days he couldn't make a lot of putts. And then he made pretty much everything on the back nine. Uh, really impressive, especially, you know, he birdied 15 the par three. And then I think it was 17 the par four. He was in the rough and people were not hitting the green from the rough. And he put it to about 20 feet, sunk the birdie putt. And from that point, it kind of felt like it was over. You know, Tommy Fleetwood did make a birdie on the par three as well, but then ended up giving one back on 17. People are making a lot about his um, club selection on 18. You know, he had a chance to tie it with the birdie, but um, ended up hitting it over the green. Probably took too much club, but didn't want to go in the water. Secured his silver medal. So happy for Tommy. And then uh, Hideki ended up, uh, you know, getting the bronze medal. So that was a lot of fun. Um, it was a great tournament. I think the Olympic golf event is just going to continue to grow and grow. Um, I think the next time uh, we see it in four years, it's going to be at Riviera and then in Australia. So it's just going to be an incredible um, addition to, you know, the yearly golf schedule, at least once every four years. Uh, as far as John Rahm, man, you kind of feel for him. Uh, it's been a tough year for him. Um, picked up the win on live last week, two weeks ago, but man, he kind of melted down there, uh, down, down the stretch there. So Let's turn our attention to the Wyndham Championship. This is going to be the event right before the FedEx Cup playoffs. So anyone outside of the top 70s can have to play well this week in order to get into the top 70. If you aren't familiar with the FedEx Cup playoffs, it is uh, 70 are going to tee it up next week at the FedEx St. Jude Championship. 50 are going to tee it up at the BMW Championship. And then 30 are going to tee it up at the Ford Championship where you have the starting strokes. It's not necessarily my favorite format for a playoff, but um yeah it is what it is it's uh pretty intriguing a lot of money on the line so golfers are going to be one of playing their best over the next uh month or so um and yeah a lot of line, a lot on the line this week because if you do make it into next week's field you get a lot that comes with it even if you don't make it all the way to east lake uh stateville country club is par 70 in north carolina 7,131 yards it's one of those courses where anyone can win um some of the guys with the best course history are like uh, Webb Simpson types, uh, Billy Forshaw. So this is one of the few courses where accuracy is probably more important than distance off the tee. If you look at the numbers from last year, the average driving distance here was only 284 yards. So well below tour average in terms of driving distance. A lot of golfers are opting to not hit driver off tee boxes. And even though the fairways are pretty narrow, golfers hit 63% of greens in regulation. Four averages about 58, so these fairways are pretty easy to hit. The greens are very easy to hit. They are pretty big, 6,000 square feet on average. Um, the tour average in terms of green regulation is 64%. The green in regulation here last year was 72%. To me, this place is more of an emphasis on approach play and putting. When everyone's hitting greens, you don't want to hit it close, and you're going to want to putt well. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, the approach shot distributions. A lot of uh, shots from 100 to 225 yards, 12% um, from 100 to 125, 17% from 125 to 150, 24% from 150 to 175, 16% to 175 to 200, 13% over or between 200 and 225, and then 11% over 225. So a nice mix of uh, approach shot distributions. We'll get to the expected strokes game approach um, numbers here in a minute in my model. See if there's anything else we need to talk about. Um, if you do miss the fairways here, it's not overly um, penalizing. It's it's lower than score average in terms of the missed fairway penalty. There are six holes with water hazards. Uh, the greens feature Bermuda grass. The winning score is typically 20 under par or better. Uh, and it was designed by Donald Ross. So if you have any more questions about the course or about anything when it comes to this event, please let me know in the comments. And while you are there, please hit the thumbs up button. It helps us out a lot. Okay, let's get to this week's model. So I do not have strokes gained off the tee in the model this week. One of the only weeks that I will not have that metric in here. I have driving accuracy and total driving. In combination of those two, it's going to be your best bet because you are going to see a lot of golfers club down. We have seen a lot of accurate drivers play well here over the years. 10% weight to driving metrics, um, slightly lean to the longer 
uh, term stats. Shows gain approach. So I went with 6% over the last three, six, and 12 months, and then 5% of the strokes gain expected, which again, takes the numbers. Uh, Data Golf has this cool feature where they have uh, expected um, approach shot numbers for each different golfer in the field each week. So they say um, Keith Mitchell is going to hit on average based on you know what clubs he's going to hit off the tee, 8.9 shots from the fairway between 100 to 150 yards. So then I go and look at how well he does from 150 yards from the fairway and look at his show state numbers for those. And I do that for every single shot uh, that they're expected to hit uh, approach shot on this course. And that's kind of what makes up this uh, strokes gain expected approach. So Lucas Glover, number one, he won here last year. Um, Shane Lowry, two, Kiriyama, three, Ryder, four, and Bazudenau, five. Um, Sebez, very interesting. Ryder, I kind of took a shot on him a couple weeks ago, ended up playing pretty bad. So we'll see if I go back to that well. Pretty low weight around the green, 12% um, of putting, one of the higher numbers that I've had all year. If you want to look at uh, Bermuda putting splits, you certainly can. That Those are the model this week. Then 5% of birdie better, 5% bogey avoidance. Um, course history here is very predictive year in and year out. In other words, golfers that have played well here in the past tend to play well here again moving forward. So I did bump that up to 6%. I have the data golf uh, course fit numbers um, at 2%. The strokes gain on short par 70s over the last two years. Min Woo Lee, Keegan Bradley, Brian Harmon, Andrew Putnam, Sung J.M. Uh, Surprised to me there is Min Woo Lee. You kind of think of him as a guy that would play better on longer courses, given the fact that he's a driver putter combo. We did see him play. We did see him play well at, um, at Honda and also at TBC Sawgrass. So those are probably making up the bulk of his strokes gain numbers there. Strokes gain on easy courses, you have uh, JT Poston, Eric Cole, Sung JM, Davis Thompson, Brian Harmon, kind of rounding down your top five there. As always, you have your cuts made for the year, and then just how well golfers have played over the last uh, 10 weeks. It shows their finishing positions, uh, also shows how often the golfer is playing. So, you know, fatigue might be a factor. Um, like something like Eric Cole, man, two weeks off for him is like probably got to feel like two months. So he might be. Real fresh heading into this week. And then I uh, pretty even weights the short-term, mid-term, long-term form. Again, short-term form is three months. Mid-term form is six months. Long-term form is 12 months. If you do want to, you know, weigh the guys that have been playing well recently, you can bump this up. If you want to look at long-term skills, you can bump this up. Again, this model is downloadable, customizable to your liking. And then uh, if you click on the little upload tab here, every adjustment that you make is going to be accounted for in these columns here. You can just upload those right in the lineup HQ, really easy. And then you can build lineups based on your own ratings, which is one of my favorite things to do in DFS. That's why I build models, um, because I like creating my own stuff rather than um, just leaning on, on other people's projections. So if you do want to check that out, if you're a premium member, uh, feel free to do so. If you have any questions on how to download the model, adjust the model, upload the results, the ratings, let me know. Um, I'm happy to help. Hit me up on Twitter, hit me up in the Discord, um, or just leave a comment on this video. Okay, let's talk about the field a little bit. Sung JM number one, no surprise there. So he's finished T12 or better in eight of his last 10 starts. Um, the approach game has really turned a corner. He's gained 15 strokes on approach in his last four events combined. And he's been awesome at this event in the past. I think he's played here five times, five for five, three top 10 finishes, every finish better than 25th. So um, for me, he's he's my favorite play on the board. Uh, Brian Harmon, second in the model. Um, I don't think many models will have him second um, in terms of the projections, but uh, this model does. And he's been in solid form. And similar to Sungjae, his approach game has actually been very good. He's gained at least five strokes on approach in five of his last 14 starts. So we know he's accurate off the tee. We know he's got the short game. If he continues to hit his irons as well, I think he's going to win sooner rather than later. Um, granted, he's going to be competing against you know much tougher fields over the next few weeks, but I think this is a great setup for him. Um, he's kind of had that Webb Simpson skill set. Aaron Rye, I'm not sure what to do with Aaron Rye. So he was in awesome form, um, but it was his putter that was kind of carrying it. For the longest time, it was like, well, if he puts well, he's going to win. And then all of a sudden, he's just putting crazy, and the irons kind of went away. And then he's coming off of a four finish. I want to say that was at the Open. So, and he's over two here. I don't know. He made the cut in 2022, but finished T70. 
T71. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, the model likes him, obviously. He's a guy that hits a lot of fairways, um, good with his irons, improving putter, doesn't make bogeys. So, in theory, this should be a really good setup for him. I mean, you could start with these three, and you'd have – uh, 21,200 for your last three. I certainly don't mind that. You usually can't afford the top three golfers in the model. Um, and you can this week if you if you want to. Um, Shane Lowry, I think it's a good setup for him. We've seen him play well at PJ National um, and, and other courses that require accuracy off the tee and uh, good iron play. I will note that the weather looks pretty terrible on Thursday and Friday. You know, there's like hurricane warnings and we might not get any golf on Thursday and Friday. So it's going to be an interesting week. Uh, we might see live clean and play in play. We might see, you know, golfers playing 36 holes on Monday. If they end up getting the first two rounds in Saturday, Sunday, or, you know, maybe the, the forecast will clear up a little bit. Not really sure. As always, check Kevin Ross weather report um, at rotogrinders.com. That is your best bet for sports specific uh, weather. Davis Thompson projects well. Don have a strong take on him. Um, you know, after his second place finish, he picked up the win. Then he finished T46, T66 over in Scotland in those two events. Hasn't played since. I don't think this is necessarily the best course fit for him, but it, it's not a bad course fit either. Horse was one of my favorite tournament plays. I bet him at 25 to 1 as well. Um, he's been playing great, you know, finished second at the Open Championship. And then he was supposed to play next week. He ended up withdrawing. I'm glad he did. I think, uh, you know, gives him a few weeks off. And over his last 10 events, he has a win. And three more top tens, and then he's finished T11 or better in five of his last seven starts here. So he loves the course. The form has been solid. The ownership looks pretty low. I like him quite a bit. Don't mind Siwoo either. I could see him playing well. He's just been so consistent all year. It's just the putter that scares me. I mean, look how bad these putting numbers are. Um, over the last 12 months, let's see how many golfers we have numbers for. So we have 147. Um, guys ranked over the last couple months and he's you know 126 so it's not great he consistently loses on the greens that does hurt his upside a little bit but you could also make the case that if he does finally have a decent week putting you know maybe he could maybe he could win um let's keep him moving we've got speed the 8700 uh number eight in the model no issue with him whatsoever um, coming off of a T16 at the Olympics, didn't play well in Scotland, missed a cut in both of those, but otherwise he's been in solid form. He's three for three here. Very solid option, especially in something like cash games. I think he's very safe. Luke Clanton, I'll play him in tournaments. I'm not going to play him in single entry three max just because he's still young. He's still volatile. He could easily miss a cut. He could easily finish top 10. And again, this is one of those courses that kind of benefits the older guys, the, the more experienced guys. Um, rather than the young guys who just you know want to bomb it out there. So um, I like the upside, but I think the floor is pretty low for the price. McNeely um, coming off of a third place finish, that was pretty impressive. Um, after you know struggling a little bit there, he's over one here, but I'm not too worried about that. Same goes for Akshay. I think it's a pretty good setup for him. He has really struggled here in the past. I'm not really sure what to make of that, but I'll argue that he's a much better golfer now than he was back then. I will note that the golfer notes are back. So if you want to take a look at those, feel free to do so. Johnny Vegas coming off of the win um, at the 3M Open. I had talked about his ball striking numbers, you know, a bunch on these videos. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't there for the win, so that one kind of hurt. Um, no idea how he's going to rank. I mean, he has four PJ Tour wins, so it's not like he's just going to be out partying. But, uh, yeah, not sure how sharp his game is going to be. Um, in his first start coming off the win. I do like Danny McCarthy quite a bit. 7,500 is a good price point. Um, he's a guy that hits a ton of fairways, and then he's one of the better putters in the field. He does have three top 25s here as well. Um, I think he's a, a really solid option. EVR, the model always likes him. I never know what to do with EVR. I do like Ben Griffin, finished fourth here in 2022. Um, we can kind of throw out you know, some of these results just because I don't think the course is set up as well for him as this one does. So I do like him. Um, English has some decent course history. Silverman projects really well. He's been a cut maker, six straight made cuts, two top 20s during that stretch. I think he's one of my favorite value plays. Keegan has made, is making cuts, but I mean, man, ever since he got named the Ryder Cup captain, he just hasn't been the same um, in terms of the upside and the ball striking hasn't been great all year. You have Keith Mitchell, who's exact opposite. I mean, he's top three ball striker in the field. Might be bottom three with the short game. 
it's just hard to trust a guy like that because you're going to have to gain stroke putting if you want to finish, you know, in the top 10. Um, Kim's a birdie maker, very volatile. I like to play him when he's lower owned, so anything under 10% is fine with me. Doug Gim's a good ball striker as well. He's uh, got some decent finishes here. Uh, Andrew Putnam, probably my safest value play of the week, coming off a of back-to-back top 25 finishes. He's got two T27 finishes here. And a lot of people are going to play up the, the narrative of you got to play well to get into the, the FedEx Cup, so the Bowl Boys will be talked up quite a bit. He's currently 72nd in the standings, so he's going to need a big week. Then you got, got a lot of guys that are just overpriced. So you have Cam Young at 9,700. I mean, he could win, but I think he could miss a cut too. This is not a course where I necessarily think he's going to be able to hit driver a bunch. Bobby Mack, I mean, he either misses the cut or contends, so I could see him struggling. Cam Davis, I do like Cam Davis. He's probably my favorite of these of these guys right here because Cam Davis plays well at the same courses every year, and he's got a good track record here. Uh, he played well at the Rocket Mortgage where he had a good track record, won that. Played well at the 3M, and can't remember what this was, but um, yeah, for whatever reason, it's the same courses every year, post top 20s. So uh, don't mind getting on board with Cam Davis. Post ends, uh, the ball striking numbers have been pretty bad. Eric Cole's finally playing a little bit better. I'll play some Eric Cole. Um, Glover, defending champ, but the form has been pretty bad. As you can see here, it's just trending wrong um, between long term, mid term, short term. Uh, I'll play some Andrew Novak. Minwoo Lee, again, he does play well in these shorter courses. He's never going to rate out well because the hand play is so bad. Um, Jordan Spieth is just – and he has one top 20 since – in his last 16 stars, one top 20. It's just hard to pay 9500 for him. I mean, 30 he's, – he's made not worse than Brendan Todd, McKenzie Hughes. Like, that's just how – and this is all number-based. This is nothing on my end. I'm not manually bumping his projection down. Spieth is just – he just hasn't been good this year. Um, so yeah, that'll probably do it for this week's video. Thank you for watching. As always, hit the thumbs up button. Become an RG Premium member. We'd love to have you. Um, we got a lot of fun stuff coming up too when it comes to football. We got some uh, new new content producers as well. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a big year. Um, so yeah, join the join the Discord. Join RG Premium if you want. If not, just uh, keep watching these videos. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.